Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome aboard. Today I'm answering some of your deepest, darkest bullet journal questions sent over to me from my Instagram. If you're not following me over there, I would pause this up right now and run over there. Hunt me down so you can keep up with all the bullet journal spreads and be in the know with all the things. So yeah, I asked you guys what bullet journal questions you have and I want all the things. Any question is a good question sort of deal. So I'm going to be answering those and putting some of my answers to practice. So let's get started with the first one. So the first question is why don't more people do simple trackers on the monthly setup, e.g. writer Carol tracker? So super interesting question here. So um, for those that don't know, writer Carol is credited with sort of spearheading the bullet journal system. There's this whole book on the bones of the system and how that's set up. I actually read it before starting my first bullet journal and of course found the whole system just fascinating as far as setting and meeting goals and really just getting all of the to-dos and just things out of my head. I personally don't think that just having the X in the daily columns gives that same sort of feeling at the end of the month. Uh, sort of more of like an afterthought over in the column versus something that you know you have an entire page for. So, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about that down in the comments. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Oh, so this question I got the most and it's basically centered around how I find illustrations for themes, colors, spreads, that whole thing. So I personally love to work on themes that are a bit unique. So that does take a bit more brainstorming, but I have my go-tos when I'm more stumped on what to do. So for me personally, I like to think internally first, um, what I'm into what's in my day-to-day -day life that can be turned into a bullet journal theme. Really the answer there is literally any and everything. Back in May, I did a whole theme on my dog and her toys. July was my boyfriend's birthday. He was born in the 70s, so I made a 70s packaging theme because we're both designers and are super nerdy about that sort of thing. So it was fun and also relevant and personal to what's going on in my life. That always doesn't have to be the case. In August, for example, I was absolutely stumped, so I searched out national holidays for August just for that spark of inspiration and went with National Underwear Day and actually ended up being one of my favorite themes this year. So I headed on over to nationaltoday.com and you click on whatever month you're looking to get inspiration for. And yeah, there are just gonna be so many different holidays that you can draw inspiration from. In November, for example, there's National Camp Day, National Sandwich Day, Day of the Dead, National Cappuccino Day, National Take a Hike Day, National Toilet Day. Any of these would make super fun and relevant bullet journal themes. And then there are entire monthly holidays and awareness campaigns, Peanut Butter Lovers Month, National Novel Writing Month, No Shave November. So just think of all the possibilities here. So yeah, I like going this route because there's no visual bullet journal context here and I can let myself be creative, learn a bit about a new holiday, and think about how any of these would translate into a bullet journal theme. Okay, let's say we want more visual guidance once we have a theme chosen. Let's say we're looking at this and we want to do a camp theme to coincide with National Camp Day on November 19th. The next move for me, if I don't have anything in mind, would be to check out color schemes. Of course, you can use Pinterest or Google to look for color inspiration, but one of my new favorite places to look is Topia Tones on Instagram. So I go there and I just scroll until I see something I like and that goes with the feel that I'm going for. I find markers and supplies that sort of match as close as possible and cool, that set.
If I need some ideas around doodles and visual references, I head to Pinterest first. So for this camp theme, we're just going to simply search for camp doodles and see what happens. And yeah, there are a lot of cute things that come up. I make a board for every theme and just save anything that catches my eye for reference later, whether it directly relates to bullet journaling or not. Also searching for camping photography could yield some usable results, whether you're drawing directly in your bullet journal or not. On the flip side of all of this, if you want to recreate already made bullet journal themes and Pinterest on Instagram, within YouTube, um, just search for a bullet journal camping theme and you'll get instant inspiration there. But yeah, for me, since I share my bullet journal as original content, I look internally, I look at national holidays, pop culture, nail down a color story, and then I get some doodle and art inspiration before planning spreads. Okay, next question. Bujo advice for us less creative. So I have all the advice for those who aren't confident in their drawing or creative skills in general. There is just so much beauty in minimalist spreads and I would definitely look into those. If those aren't your jam and you need help adding some flair to your journal to keep you motivated, I would recommend using washi tape, stickers, printouts um, that you just find on the internet, keeping an eye open for pretty packaging, patterns in magazines, just four interesting things that you could possibly repurpose in your journal. We did a huge Marie Kondo cleanup about a year and a half ago and we had so many magazines that had accumulated and I went through most of them, if not all of them, and cut out patterns, letters, quotes, just anything that caught my eye and that would be a really good resource for creativity. So I think from there, it'll be fun to create a spread with our camping theme without any super involved drawing or doodling to be able to show you how this can be done. So the first thing I'm gonna do is print out some of my favorite images we found on Pinterest. Then I'm just grabbing supplies that I think match the color story found earlier. I have a couple of sticker books that I was gifted, a bit of pattern paper, washi tape, our printouts, and of course, Tombows that match the Topia Tone color palette as closely as I have. I'm using a ruler here to just ink in the daily to-do boxes. I've been liking putting the daily boxes near the spine of the spread these last couple of weeks, so I'm going to do that here. Now I'm just measuring, cutting, and gluing the pattern paper down, and this seems to instantly liven up the spread here. Gives us a nice base to work and build on. I'm going to round the edges so it better matches with the pages of the journal. I really love this photograph and it sort of had the same light pink and dark green in the color palette, so I'm going to paste that in the bottom corner of the spread. Using my X-Acto knife, I'm going to cut out a couple of doodles from Pinterest a coffee cup that says let's go camping and a backpack. I decided to partially color the backpack with the pink to make that cohesive with the rest of the elements. The sticker books I have are really great. Uh, I found this quote sticker that had a clear backing and thought it would really work nicely at the top. And hey, I didn't have to letter it. So I'm also adding just a touch of washi tape on the photograph to sort of make it look like it's taped up on a bulletin or in a scrapbook. For the headers, I'm keeping it simple and just alternating colors in the theme and giving the boxes a subtle drop shadow. I also found these little dot stickers that matched and these have no function. They're just super cute and they match. So yeah, the lettering for the header is just my normal handwriting, nothing fancy or over the top there.
Okay, for the other side of the page, I'm going to be recreating this very simple campsite drawing. You could definitely cut this out and paste it in, lay this print on top of where you want it, trace it, and then ink it after. You'll be able to see your imprint of your trace, and that would, in theory, make it easier to draw directly in your journal. But I thought since this was really simple, it wouldn't count as being too involved. I'm using more stickers for headers and a goals tracker. I'm writing in just everyday cursive handwriting for the word notes. Final touches are just adding in some subtle little trees there from the washi tape, some star stickers, and another touch of washi. And I mean, there you have it. It's a great looking spread that has very minimal drawing. This was super fun. It was a little bit of a challenge for me, but it was a fun one. And I hope it helps you guys out with your journals. Okay, last question. Is it worth it? This is a deep question. <laughs> Again, I can only speak for myself here, but yeah, for me, it's definitely worth it. I've paid off a lot of credit card debts. I've implemented new habits, been able to keep track of all the things that I deem important to keep track of and just get all of the things out of my head and honestly know where they are. I don't have 20 post-it notes here, 20 post-it notes there, a reminder on my phone, a scrap piece of paper. I know if there's something that I'm looking for, it's gonna be in my journal. So just that peace of mind in itself is worth it for me. And then there's the joy of creating something for me. Yeah, as a designer, you would think, oh, you get to draw and design for a living. It must be so fun. Uh, but yeah, it definitely is, don't get me wrong, but you are taking direction from other people, you're designing based on research, and that sort of becomes less of a creative art, if that makes any sense. So just the fact that I can do whatever I want in my journal just for the good of the soul, and yeah, it's definitely worth it for me, definitely a game changer. But yeah, those are your bullet journal questions and the answers to them. Give this video a like if you found it at all helpful and definitely subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comments and if you have any other bullet journal questions that are just burning. So yeah, and I'll say it again, there are no dumb questions. Thank you so much for hanging out and I'll see you guys in the next one. And if you like this video, here are a couple more I think you would enjoy.